So 2 Nephi chapter 10 is fascinating because Jacob almost sets it up. Um, we see in 2 Nephi chapter 9 verse 54 that he has preached to the people this fairly long chapter. I think of myself gathering my children and reading and reading 54 verses is a lot. Mm -hmm. And so you can see maybe the people were a little weary and Jacob goes, I can read my audience. <laughs> I can see that we're almost done. And so he says in verse 54, and now my brethren, I would speak unto you more, but on the morrow I will declare unto you the remainder of my words, amen. And so there's the end of the meeting. We then flip the page and sometimes uh, you and I, we either flip the page and just go right into chapter 10 or we wait a day or sometimes uh -huh. longer. But I love what Jacob says. He says, now I, Jacob, speak unto you concerning my beloved brethren, concerning this righteous branch of which I have spoken. So he's going to talk about that. But then this fascinating experience happens in verse three. Wherefore, as I said unto you, it must needs be expedient that Christ, for in the last night, the angel spake unto me that this should be his name, should come among the Jews. So he's pausing. Obviously, the day before, he did not think, I'm going to reference Christ for the first time in the Book of Mormon. Mm -hmm. We have not seen... he didn't know at that time. He didn't. And we haven't mm -hmm. seen the title of Christ anywhere in the Book of Mormon or in the Old Testament before this. Wow. Now, Stunning. this title, Christ, is taken from the Greek word Christos, mm -hmm. which is directly related to the Hebrew word Mashiach, which means Messiah. Mm -hmm. So we do have that word throughout the text. But here specifically, he's told he will be the anointed one. He will be the Messiah. And so our very first reference specifically to the name of Christ in the Book of Mormon comes in verse 3. Jacob's been talking about it but now he's getting a little bit more.